This is Mission Control, Houston. The International Space Station's Expedition 35 spent week six on orbit with a big focus on science operations, while at the same time getting ready to receive a new shipment of supplies. A Progress cargo ship carrying more than three tons of food, fuel, clothing, and other supplies for the crew members and the science operations on board the station launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome on Wednesday. That vehicle docked to the space station's Zvezda module on Friday morning in the automated mode, despite the fact that one of the navigation antennas for that automated system never deployed. The Russian teams determined that the antenna would not obstruct the interface between the ship and the station, and the docking was carried out very slowly to ensure a smooth connection. After leak checks were completed, the crew members opened the hatches and will spend some time this weekend unloading items from the ship, likely starting with the fresh food. On Earth Day, flight engineer Chris Cassidy set up camera equipment in the window in Harmony for EarthCam, an experiment that permits middle school students to order remote photography of specific targets on Earth as a complement to their study of geography while they learn about orbital mechanics and space vehicles in flight. The EarthCam mission stayed in operation all week to support the more than 700 schools worldwide participating during Earth Week. Cassidy also spent time during the week with an experiment into the behavior of flames in microgravity, burning and suppression of solids operating inside the microgravity sciences glove box examined how different fuels ignite and how they are extinguished in this environment in order to learn more about how to put out accidental fires in space, but also to design fire detection and suppression systems for use on Earth. Flight engineer Tom Marshburn spent most of his day on Tuesday working on the capillary flow experiment, a suite of experiments investigating the flow of fluids in microgravity, especially when they're in containers that have complex geometries. The results of these experiments will provide data to the people who are designing programs that model fluid flow. Those models are used by designers of low-gravity fluid transfer systems who are trying to improve fluid flow on future spacecraft. On Thursday, Marshburn devoted his day to working with the seventh member of the station crew, Robonaut 2. A robotics demonstration project, Robonaut 2 is developing better robotics for use in future exploration missions. Marshburn set up R2 in the Destiny module for voice commanding and for remote controlling, using specialized goggles and gloves to make the robot mimic his own movements, as scientists are working with robots that can help human astronauts do work and can interact with them. In support of experiments that are designed to learn more about how the human body responds to being in a prolonged period without gravity, this week, Station Commander Chris Hadfield had several blood draws for the vascular experiment. That's a Canadian investigation looking into long-term effects of zero-g on blood vessels. He has tested before and during a flight as well as afterwards. The samples that are taken on orbit are stowed in a freezer that's in the Kibo laboratory module for later return to Earth and study by the investigators. All of the crew members are doing human life sciences research all the time. They are all functioning as test subjects for a range of research to learn what needs to be done to help people survive and thrive away from Earth on lengthy missions of exploration, like the deep space missions of the future. Hadfield also spent time on Monday talking about this mission with students in Halifax, Nova Scotia, for an event launching the Canadian National Film Board's interactive multimedia website called NFB Space School. Later in the week, he also shared his experiences on orbit with students in far northern Canada in Nunavut via amateur radio. Flight engineer Chris Cassidy and Tom Marshburn did a similar thing during an on-orbit interview with Sirius XM Radio and a television station in Portland, Maine, near Cassidy's home in York, Maine. During the week, flight engineers Pavel Vinogradov and Roman Romanenko had a couple of regular training sessions on the TORU system, 
to simulate the use of a remote control system to fly a progress cargo vehicle if necessary in case the automated system failed during docking. Romanenko also began workouts this week wearing the lower body negative pressure suit. That's a standard protocol for cosmonauts who are close to returning to Earth after a lengthy stay in space. A vacuum is used to simulate gravity and pull fluids to the lower reaches of the body, and that helps the cosmonaut get prepared to feel the tug of gravity once again. There was a lot of maintenance work done by all of the crew members throughout this week. Hadfield replaced a water valve in a cooling system in the Columbus module. Vinogradov and Romanenko disassembled the docking mechanism on the progress ship that was already docked at the piers module. Flight engineer Alexander Mazurkin devoted much of his week to a variety of routine maintenance tasks in the Russian segment of the station while tending to science experiments and that are ongoing there as well. Hadfield also conducted scheduled maintenance on the spacesuits that astronauts wear when they make uh, spacewalks, an extravehicular activity, out of the Quest airlock in the U.S. portion of the station. The next such spacewalk on the plan is in July for Cassidy and European Space Agency astronaut Luca Parmitano. On Wednesday, all of the crew members worked together on an emergency drill to practice how the crew on orbit and the control teams on the ground would respond to an emergency on board. After a weekend off duty and a chance for video conferences with their families, the crew will kick off next week with more science work at BASS and the NanoRacks payloads while taking care of station systems and unloading the new progress vehicle, while Hadfield, Romanenko, and Marshburn also turn more attention to their upcoming departure. They're due to leave the station in about two weeks to conclude their five-month mission and leave Vinogradov, Mizurkin, and Cassidy to kick off the International Space Station's Expedition 36.